The, uh, this is the last message at this time. Oh, you say you're going to be gone. Yes, we're going to be gone a while. But it's the last one dealing with wisdom because he told me the other day where we're going when we get back. And then Pertner laid one out. So I'm not, wisdom is not finished by any means. There's a whole book of wisdom called Proverbs, and that has not been touched. So it is somewhere along the line. He may pick it up again or pick it up with someone else, however it works. Uh, I just love it when he tells you what you're going to do. It takes a lot of responsibility right away. And that's how it's supposed to be. He doesn't burden us down. Kay's been doing a study, and just for the record, Kay's been doing a study. She asked me if I had a study. I had one. I've never looked at it. I've never done it. I never did it. Huh? Yes, I have. She keeps telling me. She says, you're preaching it. I said, I've never read it. I haven't been able to get there. So, uh, there you are. Uh, Kay's enjoying it. She's passing it on uh, in some measure. Uh, but the Word of God is good, and it, he, he seems to work in given areas at times of, at times of the, what we look in seasons. Uh, he blends. He comes across Christendom and seems to say, we're going here. You say, how do you know that? I've watched it over the years. Now, that would make you believe I was older than some. But I've watched it over the years. He will come along and give you a revelation of truth, something you hadn't heard, something you'd never seen before, and, and then share that with you, and you begin to deal with it, and it begins to expand. And you say to yourself, and I've said to him personally, when he rolled one of these out, I said, I've never heard anybody say this. No, you haven't. He didn't respond. He just let me. He just, you know, left me there. He figured he could handle the job, and I just, my, my was, my place was to wait on him, and he began to roll it out. Then my place was to then start talking about it. The minute I start talking about these things, you start finding where other people are seeing them. Not, not everybody, but there's samplings here, there, and the other place of what he is doing in Christendom. And you say, God, you're good. <laughs> you know, you're just flat good. That's all there is to that. You, you get this done. So today, we're going to talk about wisdom transferred from the mind of Christ. Wow. The Holy Ghost teaches via intimate, personal communication. In 1 Corinthians 2, 13, which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, or connecting spiritual things with spiritual, or join together spiritual things with spiritual, which spiritual is supernatural, so is spiritual supernatural joined together with spiritual supernatural. Wow, there's a lot of words. So here we are. The truths of the gospel and the power of God that these truths release can only be imparted through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The wisdom of man, regardless of how eloquent it is, cannot convey the life of Christ. The, the preaching of the gospel that is done in man's wisdom it's impressive to the carnal mind, but it leaves the spirit starved for the touch of God. The greatest need, I think, today, and it has been for generations since he authored this, is not for more education. Education is great. I recommend it. But here is the necessary ingredient to go along with it, to receive the revelation knowledge of the Holy Spirit. That is the necessary thing. 
I'm reminded uh, of a story. Two, two young men in seminary, they're given the same project. Had to have the results by the next day. And uh, one of them worked. And he was scheduled to go to work. So he had to go to work. The other one had some time, so he went to the library. The outcome was they both had the correct answer. But how did the other guy get it that didn't have time? He got home from work, knelt, prayed. Where did it come from? God gave it to him. All right? That's the Holy Spirit's business. That's what he was sent here for. That's why Jesus went away, that the Comforter would come. One of the most vivid examples is Luke 2.26. And uh, the whole story is told within the verses of 25 and 35. But look at, this is Simeon. It has been revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Generations was anticipating or looked for or heard of. Simeon, by the Holy Spirit, says, you're going to see him. You're going to see him. You're going to see him. He did. He saw him. Who, do you, who orchestrates our assignments, our appointments? I think we just need to recognize that he can organize us he can organize our appointments. When he shares, that's what he has planned. This revelation type revelation comes directly from the Lord. It wasn't taught to him, to Simeon, or anything that he deserved through his senses. This was a special knowledge that the Lord put in his heart, and all believers has access to revelation knowledge. The Holy Spirit is sent to instruct us. John 14, 26 says to teach us all things. That's, he shall teach you how many things? All things. Huh. John 16, 13. If you was here Wednesday, you would have got a, 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 a discourse on this one. Uh, he shall guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak uh, from himself. What things soever he shall hear, these things shall he speak. He, will, he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. Uh, he'll guide you into all truth. Well, wait a minute. Oh, and show you things to come. Does that say that in there somewhere? Did I miss it? Oh. Okay, Bill. You and I are on the, uh, John 16, it's in there. It hasn't gone away. Has he changed it already? That Bill sometimes gets, he's out there so far that he's way ahead of me. Uh, 13, he'll show you things to come right down here. Okay, I should read it all, shouldn't I? Take your own advice, Lynn. All right. <laughs> Only words spoken by the Spirit of God can reach the spirit of man. Spiritual thoughts have to be spoken with spiritual words. The gospel given by the Spirit of God cannot be dressed in human wisdom. Paul says we are to use words taught by the Spirit. It indicates the Holy Spirit will not only give us the content of the message to be proclaimed, but also teaches us the words to proclaim it. I am personally convinced. Can I say it? I'm going to say it anyhow. I'm personally convinced that God has a plan for each and every service. He also has a plan for the message for each and every service. It behooves we who are in the position to teach, share, to have his word for that particular time. I don't care if you're sitting in McDonald's sharing with someone. Listen. Listen to what he has to say to you. 
because it's, he may have something for another person and you're speaking it. And as you're speaking it, he will say, listen, you're talking about yourself too. Ever happened to you? Oh yeah, I can well remember the day. <laughs> okay. You're talking about yourself too. You say it wasn't scripted. No, nope, it wasn't. It was spontaneous coming forth. So, I'm going to talk about the children of God for a moment. There's two distinct growth patterns uh, in the children of God. Are you ready? Both, notice, both of them are children. Both are going to heaven. Let me clear that up before we even start. All right? You say, well, where are you going here? There are those that grow and listen here, and maybe not to the same measure. That's, that's not what's important. The important thing is that we recognize that there is a divine communication between you and your God. That's what's necessary. That's what's the best benefit. Now, I recognize, one, you're going to wait on him, Two, you're going to listen. And then three, pay attention and do. Okay? So here we go. Wow. On one hand, we have those who have been born of the Spirit of God and become His children. All of these two groups have become His children. But there is those that remain in a stunted state of spiritual development. You say, whoa. They tend not to grow sufficiently so that God can communicate with them on an adult basis. He spoons feeds them. That may not be what they want. They may want more. But there's a reasons, whatever the reasons are, whether they're valid or invalid. I don't know, and I'm not going to pretend to un tell you. All I know is we come to him in expectation that he should guide you into all truth. He'll do that. He'll do that. Close fellowship. We advance beyond baby food to the meat of the word. Finding joy in this fellowship with the Lord. It is such fellowship that it reveals his secrets, his depths. Both of these groups of people are children. They're both going to heaven. Let's take a look at Hebrews 5. Uh, I don't know if we got it by the verse or all of them together. 11 through 14. So we'll start where we have it. Of whom we have many things to say, hard of interpretation, seeing ye are become dull of hearing. For when by reason of time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you the rudiments of the first principles of the oracles of God, and become such as have need of milk, not of solid food. For every one that partaketh of milk is without experience of the word of righteousness. For he is a babe, but solid food is for full-grown men, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. Maybe dull of hearing, slow to hear, and receive. There is such a thing as physical deafness, and you do not hear what is said. There's such a thing as spiritual deafness. It keeps people from hearing what the Lord has to say. You have an enemy attached to that that doesn't want you to hear and understand. Okay? Okay. Verse 12, I read it on the board. For when you, it's time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and become such as has need of milk and not of strong meat. You are not recent converts because recent converts dine on milk. But you ought to be able to teach those that are seeking 
if we need a teacher, if we need to be taught again ourselves, then we too are on milk, milk of the first lessons that children learn. Not meat, let alone meat that tastes and chews like meat. That is, that is flat at a risk. That is flat fun when you're chewing meat. I like meat in the first place, real meat, okay? <laughs> so I think in some measure it may just follow over into the spiritual realm. I like meat. That's all there is to that. I like meat. Verse 13, everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Uh, we're in a move of uh, developing some more notes on righteousness. Uh, milk users are unexperienced in the word of righteousness. Righteousness speaks of unity, of character, and acts or action or deeds. By implication, righteousness is innocent, holy, and just. But I'm captured now with the thought of the equality of the character and acts of righteousness. If I receive righteousness, you receive righteousness, it's all part of the new birth. It's already wrapped up. It's in you. Whose righteousness is it? Is it your righteousness? Absolutely not. It is God's righteousness placed in you at the new birth. That is... You gave Jesus your sin. Let's do it. 2 Corinthians 5.21, Bill. I didn't really look to put it on the board today, but we'll do that. Him who knew no sin, he made to be sin. Jesus knew no sin. God made him to be sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The righteousness of God. We gave up sin and received his righteousness. By divine choice, by divine expression, that was a transaction that happened. It's already happened in you. Now, we need to, we need to develop from milk on up to, to meat. Because then you'll see the innocence, the holiness, the justness of righteousness which was given you when you gave Jesus your sin. The righteousness of God carries a double meaning, I think. It is also, it is legal. It is a legal term in the spiritual realm. It means you are without guilt or sin. All right? Without guilt or sin. Forever. What? Forever. Forever. Oh, you've been reading your book. Forever. Somebody asked me, is one going to ask a question today? And I said, no, but, you know, <laughs> I don't think so. Forever. Forever. How do, you know, how do you know it's forever? Because God said it was. And Where? The only reason that we think it's not forever is because we're looking at ourselves and thinking we're unworthy. We are unworthy. It's not us. It was Jesus who was worthy. He has done it before. Hebrews 10, 14, Bill. Let's see if this works. You believe that? I'm getting there. You mean it's a progress? It is for me. <laughs> I think it's a progress for most of us. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. How about verse 10? Let's see if that says what I think it might say. By which offering we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And in that same set of Hebrews, uh, in 9, 10 uh, chapters, there's another one in there, and I don't know quite where it's at. 
but he forgive your sin. All right, we'll back right up to Wednesday night. The simplicity of this is wrapped up in these scriptures. John 16, 8 through 11. Let's try them. When he, the Holy Spirit, when he has come, Jesus is going away that the Holy Spirit will come. Right? Amen, brother. And he will convict or reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. This is the world he's talking about. The world has sin, doesn't have righteousness, and they're in a form of judgment of sin because they do what? They believe not on me. Simple as that. That is the whole uh, thing of salvation in a nutshell right here. Of righteousness, because I go to the Father and you behold me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Can I have verse 17 of that same chapter? It's either 17 or 19. We may have to look at both. Uh, Okay, 19. Jesus perceived that they were desirous to ask him. Uh, oh. First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 or 19. Let's get in the right book. Wherefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Is that right? Verse 19. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not reckoning unto them their trespasses, and having committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Sound familiar? Yep. The only sin that's going to keep you out of heaven is not taking Jesus as your Savior. That's absolutely then, right. Amen, sister. Preach it. Now, just go right out there and share it. Watch it. You're going to preach to one of these days. <laughs> Absolutely. The only thing that is keeping you, keeping anybody out of heaven is they don't believe on the Lord. Those guy, the guy jumping out of the car, the only thing keeping him out of heaven is he don't believe on the Lord. You say, well, look at If not reckoning, charging, imputing unto them their trespasses, sins, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation, we're to tell the world that. We're to tell the world that. Amen. Wow. Okay. Uh, you want to preach some more now? Are you done for a minute? Or two or three? Okay. All right. Where are we at? Uh, let's go on down through here. I said uh, illegal is without guilt or sin. Uh, character wise, it is a perfect, morally wise, it is a perfect righteousness, a character that can only be attributed to God Himself. It can only be by God's provision. It's not by yours. I was talking to somebody the other day. I think it was Angela. She was sitting there. And we got revved up. And we were talking about righteousness or something. And if we do not, if it's a gift. It's given by God. It's, it's flat given by God. In short, you receive God's gift. If you have left it unexplored, you did not re-gift it either. You did not share it.
You get the word and you give it away. Here, here is a secret. You say, why do certain things happen to certain people? There's secrets to this in a measure. There's truths here. Uh, Assembly God Pastor, Dwajak, Michigan. I, I was sitting out there hours on end, days on end, and Ruth and I and the family and, and so on it went. And uh, there was this little Assembly God Pastor in Dwajak. God would roll something off the press by the Spirit, give it to me. I thought, yes. So I'd drive the five miles to town and share it with him. And finally one day, after repeated sessions of this, he looked at me and said, how come you do this? I said, how come I do what? How come you come share these things with me? Most people, most pastors wouldn't do that. They'd want to preach it. And, be, you know, to be first. Hey, this thing's not about being first. It's, it's about getting truth out here. But he didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> because the minute I gave it away and left him, I hooked the corner and headed out to O'Keefe Road. And as I was making the turns going up the hill, I was saying, all right, Lord, I gave it away. <laughs> See, he didn't have money to give away. You know, had the word to give away. I want some more. <laughs> I want some more. Well, you kind of squirrely. I kind of enjoyed it, though. Strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. You can do this by waiting on God. There has to be a similarity between two characters before there can be intimacy between them. Such intimacy over the years enables them to understand each other as no other human being can. The joy of one is the joy of the other. The sorrow of one is the sorrow of the other. The interest of one is the interest of the other. In short, they know each other's secret self. They possess each other's love and confidence. And what is known, what is known by the name of friendship is fellowship, partnership, oneness. John 15, 14 and 15. Here's the truth, folks, right here. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants or slaves, for the servant or slave knoweth not what his Lord doeth. I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. I went away. I paid your price, your sin debt, that the Holy Spirit would come and give you all truth. Hmm? Amen. Glory. Wow. And when this happens, it'll fill your heart with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Wisdom is transferred from the divine. The method is the Holy Ghost, the teacher, is the revealer. The students are you and I. All right? Those who love the Lord and God hath prepared. <laughs> you love the Lord, God prepares you. He does. He prepares you. He equips you. He gets you ready for that which he has for you. He prepares you. The lessons are the deep things of God that the Spirit searches. You've been learning about this now for several weeks. The cost to you is... They're freely given to us of God. <laughs> if it's a gift, it cannot be charged to, your, to you. All I can do is say thank you and experience it to its full potential. The overview is comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The results are demonstrations of the Spirit and of power, Thus confirming we speak the wisdom of God, the wisdom hidden from the world, but God before the world has ordained it, the wisdom unto our glory. Whose glory? Our glory. Oh boy. They, the things of the Spirit, are spiritually discerned. This 
These verses will conclude, I think, the 1 Corinthians 2, chapter 2, and the verses 14 through 16. Let's read them. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned, judged. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged or evaluated of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct? And he may instruct him, but we what? But we what? Have what? The mind of Christ. He's we have the mind of Christ. We have the means to draw from the mind of Christ, to listen. The Spirit comes to share, reveal all things. Patty? On my desk in the corner, uh, the corner next to the window going out towards the parking lot, I think there's a piece of paper right on the top. Would you get that for me, please? That is the, that is the ministry of the Spirit of God. Whoa. The mind of Christ. But we have, last sentence, we have, we hold, we possess, we are furnished with the mind of Christ. You say, me? You. You're his? You've been furnished with it. You, Jackson, you've been furnished with the mind of Christ. Say amen. 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 Yes, thank you. Yeah, from Dale. He does this to me. He cranks me up. You know, yeah, I told him what the subject was going to be uh, in March, so he fires me off this question. Is God's faith in you supernatural? If it's not supernatural, it's dead. Have a great service. <laughs> now, did he really think I could leave that alone? Or is that just a written thing? So here is my response to Brother Dale. Welcome to it, young man over there in the Ukraine. Good morning to thee. The question then is, is God supernatural? He dwells in us with all that he is? A series of questions. He gave us a gift, his son, and all that he is. Question? Then the son gave us a gift, the Holy Ghost. Question? Reason? To guide us into all truth, throw us, show us things to come, and empower us. Right? De depositing with us all things that the Son and the Father has. Um, John, uh, Bill, John 16, 12 through 15. Let me just read it. Uh, you, you've seen it before, but seeing we're going to field. Uh, we'll do it again. Uh, John 16, 12 through 15. This is, he just talked to, the, to those that didn't believe, the sinners. We talked about it earlier this morning. Uh, but now, when he starts verse 12, he's talking to you and I uh, in 11, now in 12. And he's talking about the Spirit, what the ministry of the Spirit is to you and I. All right? I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak. He will show you things to come. Right? Amen. He shall glorify me. Amen. He shall receive of mine. Amen. And show it unto you. Amen. Show. Amplify says, reveal, declare, disclose, and transmit. It unto you. Amen. Now, if you're not able to grasp that, 
that these things that Jesus has. Now hang on, he's about to explain where he gets them from. The one who died for us, who gave us what he is. All right, hang on. Now he's explaining. All things that the Father hath are mine. Amen. <laughs> Therefore, said I, he shall take of mine and do what with it? And shew it unto you. Give it unto you. Reveal, declare, disclose, transmit all things that the Father has. That all, he gave all things to the Son. Neat. Okay. Depositing with us all things that the Son and the Father has. If so, then dwells in us the fullness of the Godhead. You say, boy, brother, you are out there. Dwells in us the fullness of the Godhead. Okay. Colossians 2, 9 and 10, amplified, please. You want to read this to me? Not really? Okay. You want to read it to me? Like that? Yeah. For in him the whole fullness of deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. And you are in him, made full and having come to fullness of life. In Christ you too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we and we full spiritual chapter. And he is the head of of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power. That's on both sides of the aisle, by the way. All right. So then this reply back to Dale goes on. We are then the storehouse of the supernatural, right? Mm-hmm. When they come to us, they did not leave anything of themselves behind. Your brother, Lynn. Wow. The things of the Spirit are spiritually discerned. I, we read that, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 14 through 16. Let's go to 1 John 4, 13 through 17. Hereby know we that we dwell in Him. You dwell in Him, right? I mean, after seven and a half years, you know you dwell in Him. And He in you. Amen. Because He has given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him. It's just a fact. Just a fact. Just the truth. And he in God. He does what in God? He dwells in God. And we have known and believed the love God hath to us. God is love. He that dwelleth in love. You dwell in love? You have to if you dwell in God. That's what he is. You say, I don't love. Hang on, buddy. Brother. You can express that love. It's in you. It dwells in you. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him dwells. Herein is our love made perfect, complete, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Wow. Isn't that something? That is, that is fantastic. Let me share something else with you. 
The, the Spirit cannot, will not, dwell in those of the world or natural man. Therefore, they cannot see, hear, or know spiritual things. Only those God has prepared by the indwelling Spirit can know. John 14, 17. They are prepared and furnished with the mind of Christ. Wow. Natural man walking in the vanity of their mind. Let's take another. We're going to go back and look fleetingly at 1 Corinthians 2, 14 again. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. People look at us as if we're cracker jacks of some kind. We're not real. How can you think like that? You have no basis for your thoughts. That's not very wise. What do you compare it with? Hello? The Spirit of God reveals the Word of God. Let me give you this. The Word of God is Jesus Christ himself. A spirit does nothing more than to explain the word, which is Jesus Christ himself. I've always been a little perplexed. Can I say that? You say you've been at this 50-some years. I've, I've been perplexed. And once in a while, perplexed hangs around. <laughs> I'd like to say hours, but sometimes it's days, it's weeks, it's years. I'm going to give you a scripture, and probably every one of you can quote it. Bill, will you put Romans 10, 17 up? So then faith cometh by what? Hearing by what? The word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word, which is Jesus Christ himself. who I know gave himself for me, who I know died for me. Matter of fact, he died on that cross and took me and took Azahan with him. Took the world to him, himself there. The word. I'm coming to the place where I just, I said, I read the word. It's Jesus. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. I got grace and truth. Keep doing that. You find out you have a storehouse of supernatural things that you thought was natural. That you had to do something to earn it. There's no none of that. Receive it. Probably what the book said. I tell you, it is great, isn't it? We do not need to walk in the vanity of our mind. Nope. We have the mind of Christ. We just need to get direction over from here to here. Amen. The natural man, the natural man literally means a human being governed by his own natural human powers and not of the Spirit of God. They receiveth not. It's an absolute negative. The natural, carnal, fleshly man's mind will not receive spiritual wisdom. It is foolishness unto him. The word foolishness perhaps is best defined by a contrast as used in another verse. 1 Corinthians 1.18 saying this, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Huh? <laughs> they say, that's foolishness. I tell you, it's the power of God. What don't you understand? It's the power of God. Oh, you go to those that do what? Perish, it's foolishness. Perish. Oh, my, my, my. What is that? Destroyed fully. Perish or lose. Foolishness, silliness, or absurdity. Unto us which are saved, it is... It is Delivered, protected, healed, preserved, be made whole. It is the power, the dunamis, the dynamite of God. The resulting contrast, simply spoken, simply said, is this. One, foolishness loses. <laughs> Not complex. Wow. 
it perishes, is blind and destroyed. The two, the saved, are made whole by the power of God, the mighty miracle, the working, the, the working power of God. Natural man has not received the things of the Spirit because they are spiritually discerned, evaluated, separated, and judged. The word foolishness also means dull, absurd, distasteful. Remember, the natural man lives primarily for the animal part of his nature. He lives primarily for what? Looks good, feels good, tastes good, sounds good. Mm -mm -mm. The truth is, a natural man has already ruled spiritual things as foolishness, unworthy of their time and focus. Wow. I'm going to, I think we're just going to give you the next little portion to go back and support a statement I made a little earlier. The Word, the person, Jesus, is the textbook that the Holy Ghost used. All right? He teaches from that textbook of Jesus Christ, the Word. The Word is not only, the Word of God is not only paper and ink. The, the Word of God is Jesus. He is the Word. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This Word contains the creative energy of God. Now hang on. 1 John 5.7 For there are three that bear record in heaven. Can you get all three of them to bear record in earth? (laughs) And there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word. Who's the Word? Jesus is the Word. And the Holy Ghost. These three are what? One. Ice. One. 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 But hang on. We're invited to dwell with them and they in us. One? Can I say there's another one added to the one? I think we can. Wow. Lynn, I tell you, isn't it? It is just. Who? See, how come we can say when, it, when they come to abide in us, they didn't leave anything behind. They come with what they were. Awesome. Father, I do thank and praise you this morning for the awesomeness of the Word of God because it intertwines and interconnects and with cords that, are, that you cause them to make us convinced and assured and bold and act with confidence and assurance of the things that you've stated because you are the word you gave all and you gave it all to us we thank and praise you for it may it live resound glorify you in and through us and in these moments to come may we again just give you properly the praise the honor and the glory of that which you have given to us we give you thanks and praise in jesus name amen Wow. Okay.